Hi. Um, so, yes, I am with the Illuminati. I often say that our tagline should be not that Illuminati, the good ones. Um, we are an immersive projection design company. So, that works. Uh, so, as you can see out in our exhibit, uh, most of our, our immersive environments are based on our fisheye projection uh, lens. We also make um, domes of all shapes and sizes and interactive software uh, for domes and that sort of thing. And I think that the definition that resonates most uh, these days of what we do is group virtual reality experiences. So it's the ability to share that VR experience with your friends, your school group, the people you came to the museum with that uh, creates a powerful immersive uh, experience. So, as I mentioned, uh, our, well, I didn't mention it yet. Our, we've been in business for 15 years as a company, and we've worked with, uh, in, in lots of different industries. Um, in this case, um, in entertainment, we also work with design clients, uh, medical VR, that sort of thing. Um, but we have sort of evolved to discover that our heart is in education, and in applying these technologies, in ways that are going to create moving and meaningful educational experiences. Um, starting though with our sort of more commercial work, this is a project that we did with DreamWorks a couple of years ago. Uh, it's an immersive sleigh ride to the North Pole uh, using our projection system as uh, the virtual screen. Their first goal was to use uh, headsets, but since the age target age was so young and because it was a family holiday experience, uh, screens, immersive, a physically immersive environment was a, a better solution for this, this deployment. So working with clients like this lets us, lets us pay the bills, <laughs> but it also um, lets us bring, you know, we, we stay on top of the best practices and technological innovations in the entertainment industry and bring that to museums and science centers, science and education. So we often incorporate uh, game technologies, different UI and UX from the game world to our museum projects. So an example is this one. It's the Cave Art Interactive, which we did for the Field Museum. So inside one of our domes, uh, Wiimotes from the Nintendo Wii are housed in flashlight housings, and you shine them on the dome and play a Unity game, which we developed, which lets you learn the four main theories of Cave Art. So there's the, the Wiimote uh, with our, our fisheye lens. Uh, those are both custom installations, and we do a lot of those. Uh, it, it seems that almost every installation we do has some kind of custom component, usually with the UI, UX. But our, the Geodome is what we call our turnkey immersive offering um, in education. So as you can see, the same, same lenses and software work in a variety of applications. The, the screen design sort of depends on the user experience that you want to create. And so uh, we launched the Geodome in 2008, and we are in uh, lots of institutions, mostly in North America, but we have several global clients as well. We've partnered with NASA and with NOAA to get their data out into immersive experiences in museums and in some formal education. Um, in the years since. And hundreds of thousands of learners experience the genome every year. So a great example, which works, yes, is a project for the Children's Museum of Manhattan that we did a couple of years ago. It's an exhibit on Islamic culture. And our contribution, the panorama, is an interact interactive exploration of mosques around the world. And so as you can see, it's a group experience. Kids come with their families. They get to share the experience together, ask the parents questions, talk about it with each other, which is something that happens in a physically immersive space that you don't quite get as so much as
So design, so creating a physically immersive space design is absolutely critical, of course. Um, our philosophy is to start with the user experience and design the technology from there. So the Children's Museum project is using a panorama, a similar screen to the one that we have outside, uh, which wraps around and does an ultra-wide field of view. It goes all the way to the floor and then curves up overhead, which is really important for creating that sense of, of presence. Um, so it's really to create an, an experience that's really immersive, we're going to mimic the, the, your natural field of view by going down to the floor and above and, and wrapping around the human field of vision to 10 degrees or more. So our cycloramas, which is a 360 degree environment, use the same design, even for large groups of people. So when you're in an environment like this, it creates a sense of presence or being there because the horizon is, the, is where it should be. So when you're doing planetary surface exploration, like the Mars rover that we have out in the, in the dome, or walking through a 360 video or other VR media, having that feet on the ground perspective is really important to, to create that, that sense of immersion. So the key components, and this is really what makes immersive uh, environments effective and, and powerful. So we are, because we're surrounding them with imagery, we are awakening the audience's peripheral vision and the sense of dimension. Also, as we navigate through the content, whether that's a user-driven interactive or a dose of presentation, we're engaging uh, senses of space and time. Obviously, when you're inside an immersive space, uh, attention is completely captured, which is really something not to be taken, taken for granted you know, these days. I'm sure if we walk through the Science Center outside, you'll see plenty of people kind of staring at their phone as they walk past the exhibits. Um, and then finally, it's the, the group experience. The fact that a group of people is sharing the experience together creates a collaborative experience with social aspects. And then a note that I, I didn't add to the bullet points, it's fun. They're fun and they're cool, they're attention getting, and it's something that you can sort of turn to your friend and grab and you know, it's the, the fun factor is, is important. So to talk about some different applications of immersion, physically immersive environments, um, I think one uh, immersive experience that maybe the first that people sort of think of are, are planetariums. And we do work in that space, but we really, we are the genome evolver is our planetarium offering. And we think of it more as a digital dome theater than, than as a planetarium. I mean, we named it that because uh, planetariums have evolved from being the old star ball optomechanical projector to either complementing or replacing that with a digital projection system. And now we have these massive theaters with cinema quality, uh, cutting edge projection. Um, so along with that, uh, content possibilities have evolved. Astronomy, there are tons of amazing platforms for, for astronomy, but we can also do earth science, underwater navigation, cultural narratives, um, all sorts of, of different uh, possibilities to explore in the dome. And so with the recent, um, especially with the recent sort of VR surge, there is a ton of available 360 content. Um, so we created this tool for the education space. It's, it's called World Viewer. It's built um, on Unity, and it's a media mashup tool for, for 360 or, or widescreen media. And it makes it really simple to create your own interactive presentations, uh, and also to keep your content fresh. So for our museum clients, this means that uh, without render a time or programming skills, you're creating something that's new and interactive. And so each time a visitor comes to your museum, your dome, they might have a completely different uh, learning experience. So another client project to, uh, to look at that's kind of pushing the envelope for using this immersive technology is the Cube at Virginia Tech. Tech has a particle collider on campus, the Bell Collider, and so what we were just looking at was uh, visualization of actual particles colliding and the work that they're doing there. And 
so really the driver for this project, we were already working with VR technologies, but the goal was to be able to do a multi-person, large-scale VR installation. Um, they also have up to a thousand students in a day come to an event like the Science Festival we just saw, and uh, VR and headsets for that many visitors would be a challenge to say the least. So uh, their, their Cyclorama 360 space uh, enables them to create a, a group social uh, VR experience. So they're doing things from, from highlighting the particle uh, collider to showing 360 video of sports events to bring in donors for fundraising events. All sorts of uh, elements of the campus are using the, uh, the technology. I actually asked them for the list which was longer uh, than I anticipated. Another cool thing about their environment is that uh, they had, so, so it's a multi-use art space, and they already had an amazing 360 audio system installed. So the screen that we made is acoustically transparent. So it, your experience is not only visually immersive, but it's also immersive on, on the audio side. So it creates a sensory experience, especially at such a large scale that is, is um, one of, I think, a few in the world that is that, that, that truly immersive. So on the education side, um, uh, another kind of project to look at, uh, the, the Bell Museum Explorodome project was our first, it was the, the prototype geodome, the first time we did a portable uh, immersive learning environment. Um, I actually think Burning Man was the first one, but that's a, a different that's a different talk. Um, the uh, so they then this started in 2006, uh, and it's still going strong. It's in uh, Minneapolis. They're out in the field every day of the school year, and for uh, summer camps and special events. Um, Sally Brummel is their main educator, and she's also spearheaded a project at the New Bell Museum, which is a beautiful new facility. Um, they have a geodome panorama as part of their Life in the Universe uh, exhibit. And the goal of that exhibit is to sort of understand our place on Earth, our place in the universe. Um, this is another project that's using game technology. Not only is it using our world viewer and other interactive tech, um, there's a lead motion sensor that, that uh, plays content when people come into the dome. And they're planning to do more programming with the actual gesture-based capability of the software. And some bonus points, the design director of Lead Motion is the guy who made the AR video we watched after John Petty's talk this morning, so full circle there. Uh, so I, I spoke with Sally, the educator who's been running this program for such a long period of time, to kind of get her take on why domes are powerful and what is, you know, what is useful about this physically immersive experience as a group. And she first said, it's sort of like having your own personal spaceship, which goes back to that cool fun factor, that, that is just cool. Um, and Sally's take, it's powerful to be surrounded by the imagery, not only in the sense of engaging the senses I mentioned before, but because you create an emotional connection to the content. So you really have the time in the dark to, to connect with the information that's being presented to you. And then also being together with your classroom or your group creates a, a shared experience, which, which makes it more of an emotional, uh, emotional connection. Uh, Sally also said that the power of presenting information in this venue is context, which is critical for learning something new. You need to be in that familiar place, feet on the ground, uh, with your, you know, sort of knowing where you are in order to go somewhere else, in order to present new topics, new perspectives. You start from, from the place that's familiar. And then finally, the power to scale is uh, something that makes immersive environments uh, particularly powerful, especially for science education, because you can look at different scales of time. Uh, for example, a planetarium educator might look at the seasons or uh, go through moon phases, that sort of thing. So you're scaling through time and then scaling through space and perspectives. So for example, with World Viewer, you might start at the Earth and then zoom out to look at the solar system, or zoom back in to be to with for a feet on the ground exploration of a, a 360 image or 360 video. So spanning these scales while you're grounded in context of a familiar physical setting. It creates an understanding of new places, new data, the interrelations between these, these new, new concepts. 
couple of other shots to illustrate those points. So what we, what we feel the, the real power of uh, the shared group experience in an immersive environment is for education is, is these three, three points. Uh, they're transdisciplinary. So not only do they serve multiple disciplines in, in academia, but they also let you present all sorts of different concepts and illustrate the way they're interrelated because they are presented in, concept, in context. Uh, they're transcalar, so we're moving through time, space, different perspectives. And then finally, they're transformative. Once you create this group experience, um, a shared perspective, and sharing this experience of learning together, it can be transformative, which is critical, I think, in, in, in today's world where we're sort of encouraged to be tribal and separate. To share this experience can, can really be meaningful. And then a final project to highlight, which actually really exemplifies that transformative uh, capability is the Worldviews Network. So this was a grant project, uh, fund, it's a NOAA environmental literacy project with partners, um, some of the leading institutions in the states, uh, Cal Academy in San Francisco, the American Museum of Natural History. And the concept was that inside dome theaters, we would start at the Earth and then use NASA's Digital Universe Atlas in 3D to do a scaled exploration. So you start at the Earth, fly out through the solar system, into the galaxies and the galaxy clusters, all the way out to the W map, which is the edges of the Big Bang, or the, as, as far as, we, as we've been able to measure. And then we come back in and come back not only to Earth, but also to a, a feet on the ground exploration of a, a bioregional narrative. So each of the institutions created their own. Cal Academy looked at the Valley Oak, which is an endangered uh, tree, and they brought in perspectives from uh, the indigenous culture. Uh, Denver did the global water story. Uh, AM and H in New York uh, looked at migrations, human and, and otherwise. Another thing that was unique about this was that after the dome presentation, there was a charrette of stakeholders in the community to, to talk about the experience that they had had and see what next steps might, might be inspired by that sort of thing. So again, our heart as a company is in education and it's our hope that our technologies will be used to make a difference, make an impact with experiences like these. That is the uh, recent World Youth Network deployment at the Aspen Ideas Festival. And so, again, the goal is to, to get these concepts out to people who will take them in and do good in the world. And that's us.